A Washington man by the name of Jermaine Macy was in Portland, Oregon. He was staying at the Portland Doubletree Hotel and he happened to be in the lobby to take a call from his mother. But as he was speaking to his mother, he was approached by the hotel's security guard who urged him to leave for no apparent reason. In fact, there's video, let's take a look. He's calling the cops on me because I'm taking a phone call at the Doubletree Hotel. Say hi, Earl. Say hello. You came over here because I was taking a phone call in the area where no one was. I had a family emergency and I was taking a phone call and this guy's harassing me. You really want this PR issue, Earl? Do you? Portland police will be here in a minute. Thank you. Call them. I'm waiting. Okay. They're coming, why? Why are they coming? Escort you off the property. Because what, and I'm staying here? Not anymore. Oh, Okay, I'm staying here. I have a hotel. Yeah. Did he ask any of those people that just walked by what room they were staying in? No. So this goes on and on and the security guard doesn't give him a reason for why he's calling the cops to get this guy escorted off the premises. Like what, 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 what's going on? What did I do wrong? He keeps asking. It isn't until much later in the video that he gets accused of loitering, which is ridiculous because again, he's a hotel guest and he's in the hotel lobby taking a phone call from his mother. But there's more, I wanna show you more of this video. Let's take a look. If you're gonna call the cops on me, I'd like to know why. I was just asked you. So you're gonna just follow that direction? You're not gonna ask me questions before you call well, the cops on me, well, that's what I was Lewis? Going to do. So if you could just calm down, all right? What's what's going on? What's the issue? So now you ask what the issue is after you've called the cops on me, right? Yes. Because I was taking a phone call in the lobby and Earl decided to come over here and harass I me. That. I'm just coming into the situation. I'm telling you what happened. Okay. So he wouldn't ask me to call 911 without without any cause. I didn't do anything to this man. Okay. I'm taking a phone call. You. Did you ask them to just walk by? They're not loitering. How am I loitering in an area that's public? You're sitting here. So this area is off limits after a certain time? Only if you're a guest. I am a guest. You didn't tell me what, that. Uh, I said that I'm a guest. Okay, so he gets accused of loitering. Uh, my favorite part of that video is where Jermaine Macy, who has the calmest voice and the calmest tone, is told to calm down. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. My normal indoor speaking voice isn't as calm as Jermaine Macy's indoor speaking voice. No, he was the calmest man in America. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'd have lost it, right? <laughs> but he's like, hey, Earl. Okay. Do you really want it's this like, PR nightmare, Earl? <laughs> right. He, this is like out of an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, calm down. I am calm. <laughs> what the hell? All right, now, wait, wait, wait. Look, uh, there's two parts of the story that make it even more amazing. At one point, he shows him his hotel key. Like, he's like, this is, and it's got the date on it, it has the room number on it. It's it's the, you know, you've all been to hotels, it's the card. It's You can tell it's from the hotel, you can tell it's from that day. So he is definitely staying at the hotel. Then I thought, like, I keep thinking, okay, well, there's gotta be something, right? Because it seems unbelievable. If you're not black, it seems unbelievable. I've been in a billion hotel lobbies, I've taken a billion calls, nobody's ever hassled me over it, right? So. I thought maybe there was something we didn't see on the tape and like that they got into a beef earlier before the video started and there was an assault or something and Earl's just keeping mum about it. No, he says it right there, loitering. Loitering is you're sitting here when you shouldn't be sitting here. But the guy's like, but I'm staying at the hotel, here's the, my room key and it's from today. So I literally paid to sit that's here. That's right, that's right, yeah. And they're like, yeah, but on the other hand, you're black. Because to Earl, loitering means sitting in the lobby while black. It doesn't mean anything else. And you know, like when, when I saw the story, I was like, oh, here we go again. That's the unfortunate part about this is that a, a black man was just questioned for where he lives in New York this week. This is a, another story about this. Well, this is why people say black lives matter and people get upset and say, well, you know, trans lives matter and, and gay people, queer lives matter. They, everybody's life matters, but nobody knows you're trans, nobody knows you're queer, they don't know you're gay, but they always know you're black. And for every black man in America, stay calm means don't get out of hand, boy, because it could cost you your life. And that is the, the subtext that we are fluent in that a lot of people refuse to 
to acknowledge. And it makes me furious because my son is moving out this week and I worry about him when he drives home. I have to worry about the police. I gotta worry about gangs. I gotta worry about every uh, somebody feeling threatened by him because he's 6'4". That is the reality of having to be a black person in America. And if you are that tone deaf, and at this point, after all of these stories, you still say what about, then you are definitely part of the problem. So I remember we were, covering a similar story. The context was different, but it, it had to do with someone calling the cops on a black person. And the, I had a huge blind spot in covering that story. And I'm actually grateful for members of our audience for shining a light on, on this. Look, when the cops get called on a black person, it's not just an inconvenience. It could literally cost them their life because of all the various stories that we've covered of, of unarmed, innocent black people getting shot and killed by cops. You make one move that a cop perceives as a threat and they'll open fire, you're done. And what made that even more clear to me, especially in this story, was the next video that I'm gonna show you because it's the confrontation with the cop. Now, luckily, the cop didn't do anything wrong, but you're gonna see what it looks like when you're confronted by a cop after you haven't even done anything wrong. Take a look. Because Earl told me Earl's that I need to leave. Earl's control of the property, yes. Okay, so Earl leave, runs this leave. place, right? He does I'm right sitting now. here taking a phone call. He comes over here you questioning me while I'm on the phone. Into- so later on, um, Macy actually filmed a video in his hotel room where he explained that the cops, uh, you know, told him that they, you know, they don't have any bias here. They were called. It's their job to show up, and the cop didn't do anything wrong. So I want to be clear about that. The only person who did anything wrong here was uh, the security guard Earl and the manager. And, and the manager, manager. Yeah. yeah. So the the hotel and they put out some. F- ridiculous apology, which I'll get to in just a second. But looking at that video, I mean, you see the cop there. I mean, how threatening is that? Like the the guns right there. You know that if you make one wrong move, your life is in jeopardy. And people need to consider that every time they stick their nose in someone else's business when they have no business doing so and decide that they want to call the cops. Like live your life. That's what I don't get, live your life. It's right? a threat. It's become a threat. It's don't make me call the police on you. It's it's yeah. become like the favorite threat of people who are don't see black people as human. That they dehumanize black people. They don't see them as equal. See them as violent. And it's it's constant and it's infuriating. And you know, like I, at this moment, this is one of my New Year's resolutions. Is, is I'm gonna go sit down with LAPD and talk about these issues, because for me, it's real. If we can talk about it and talk about it, but we have to, those of us who call ourselves allies have to stand in the gap for the people who continue to get harassed. And and you can tell that the cop was above him because he was looking up, he was filming up. We we have to keep staying in the most non-threatening fashion, stand in a non-threatening stance just for mere survival. And that's ridiculous, it's infuriating, you're angry about it. Imagine that dude. Yeah. No, yeah, that's imagine. why in the civil rights movement they had signs that just simply said, "I am a man," and so because all this is dehumanizing. Look at the privilege that Anna and I had that we talked about at the beginning of this clip. We said, "My God, that we would never be that quiet voiced." You know, Jermaine mm-hmm. M- Macy was incredibly polite and very soft tone. That's because we have privilege. Because mm-hmm. if the cops get called on us, it's very. I mean, I'm brown, but I'm not black. Okay, very unlikely to get shot, and so it could happen. And cops are, you know, have shot a lot of unarmed people in this country. But uh, but I get to be loud, and it gets to be loud. Uh, and and African Americans, even at the, and particularly when they are suffering the biggest injustice, uh, that is the moment when they can least afford to be angry, and it, that is infuriating. So I, you suffer the injustice, but if you dare fight back in any way, shape, or form, even verbally, you're taking a risk with your life. Yeah, some microaggressions. I was flying to uh, Arizona and I had to use the restroom. I had a kidney infection, TMI, but I I couldn't hold it. And um, the the flight attendant kept telling me to, to wait. 
In the meantime, the two white men that were sitting in front of me, two of them got up and used the bathroom and she wouldn't say anything. So I said, listen, I have to use the restroom, I'm sick and I really need to go. And she goes to me, she's like, first of all, I said, you can't. And second of all, I need you to calm down. There's a white lady <laughs> sitting next to me, an older white lady. She said, calm down for what? She didn't say anything to you. Why are you telling her? That? And she went off on the lady. Mm -hmm. And her response to the lady who went off on her was passive, was peaceful. But the aggression was towards me. And it's like, can you imagine being a black man? I'm a brown woman. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, I, was, I, I sat there and I was like, am, am I crazy? Because I didn't raise my voice. I was sick. I had a fever. And she was like, I need you to calm down. Yeah, no, we all gotta stand up for each other. So I love that, uh, that oh, the person yeah. next to you stood up for you. Last thing on this is, look, we you just please think about uh, being in somebody else's shoes for once. And so that's what we always emphasize. So like, I, you know, I joke around on the show that if you just wear a sports jacket, you can get into anywhere. Uh, and like I can walk into any fancy hotel, any fancy place, just walk confident, have a sports jacket on and you'll be fine. And our senior producer, J.R. Jackson, was like, no. <laughs> no, you can do that, I can't do that. He's like, you know, every time I go to Beverly Hills, we're in LA, right? If I'm just driving through Beverly Hills, half the time I get pulled over. I've never been pulled over in Beverly Hills. So we live in different worlds, we gotta acknowledge that and work together to fix it. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.